Thank you so much for joining us today, and happy Mother's Day to all of you beautiful mothers out there. Please stand with us as we sing this song today.
you believe that this morning, church? You can have a seat. God is the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper, the light in the darkness. Even when things seem impossible, it's not impossible with God. Amen? Well, listen, we are so glad that you're joining us, all of you who are sitting with us here in the room and all of you who are joining us from your living rooms. It's so good to have you all with us. And happy Mother's Day to all of you who are moms here in the room and at home. We're so, so grateful for you because none of us would be here without you. <laughs> so thank you for all that you do and all that you give and your prayers and your love and your service and everything. This is a, a special day and we just want to honor you and celebrate all of you. Also just want to say thank you to all of you for your faithful giving through this time. Um, you guys have been mailing stuff into the church, you've been dropping it off here, and we just want to keep thanking you for, for your generosity and your giving, even in this time that's really tough. Um, and just as a, by way of reminder, for those of you who are here, on your way out, we have our offering plates set up in the back that you can just drop something off on your way out this morning. Those of you who are at home, you can mail it in um, or, or check out our online giving on the website. Lots of ways that you can give, but we just want to thank you for, for your faithfulness in giving. We've been talking about Right Now Media, the, the, the bank of videos and Bible studies that we've been using, and we told you that we're switching from Right Now Media to Faith Life. Next Sunday, we're going to have a presentation to just help you learn a little bit more about Faith Life and what's on there. Uh, but just this, this is your last week to use Right Now Media, so get it all in while you can. Uh, but we'll be switching this coming weekend. Uh, May 15th is when that switches over to Faith Life. So make sure you set up your free Faith Life account if you haven't done that yet. And then... Uh, grab a couple things here. Today, on Mother's Day, begins our uh, collection for Options Pregnancy Center. And on the way in, you may have picked up one of these bottles. Um, if you had one of these, go ahead and what we're asking you to do is just between now and Father's Day, collect all of the change that you want to put in here or dollar bills or whatever, you, whatever kind of money you want to put in here. Options will take it all and they will be very grateful for it. <laughs> so just between now and Father's Day, collect that and then you'll bring these bottles back on, on Father's Day. Or you may have picked up one of these little um, envelopes in the back and that has information about how you can give by mailing a check um, to the church or by even giving online. There's a lot of options of how you can give. I didn't mean that. Options for how you can give to Options Pregnancy Center. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> but we're very thankful for Options. Um, this is a, a ministry that we've been partnering with for... As long as I've been here, it's been a long time. I don't know when we started, but we're very thankful for Options and all that they do. Their work with, uh, with single moms, with young girls who find themselves in the place that maybe they didn't expect to find themselves, and they're thinking about what they can do or should do, and Options works with them and provides resources and all kinds of stuff. So we're, this is a ministry that we're really, really happy um, to support. And finally, um, for those of you at home, we want to just let you know that today is a communion day. We're going to be celebrating communion at the end of the service. So if you need to get up and go grab like some bread or crackers and some juice or something like that to have that ready at home for the end of the service, you can do that. Let's just pray before we uh, move on in our service here this morning. Father God, thank you um, for all that you are. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for your goodness. Lord, we could, <laughs> well, we could spend eternity listing all of your attributes and praising you for all that you are. And one day we will. But for now, you still have us here on this earth to proclaim your goodness, uh, to speak your truth, to show your love, to reflect your light as you shine on us. Lord, may we do that in our families, in our workplaces, in our schools, uh, on our sports teams, in our neighborhoods. May we reflect you. And thank you, Lord, that as we walk with you, we are reflecting you and, and growing in you and, and reflecting you with increasing glory. 
Lord, may this morning be a, a very special morning for our moms, first of all, and this day be a very special morning or a very special day for them, that they will be blessed, that they will be honored, that they will just be filled up and refreshed and strengthened. And Lord, would you do that with all of us as we hear from your word, as we, as we enter into your presence through singing and praying and, and looking at scripture. May we find our rest in you. May we find our peace and our joy and our strength in all that we need in you. God, you are good. <laughs> it's so simple, but it's so true. Open our hearts and draw us close to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
think about this bridge guys there have been so many times in our life where we do not know where we're going we don't know where to go where to turn but the spirit has led us there the spirit has always been there guiding us and protecting us and comforting us no matter where we go so as we, as we sing this bridge just think about the words rest in his presence and just embrace his goodness
pray. Father, thank you that you do lead us. Lord, even when we try to plan out our course, it's you who determines our steps. And Lord, I I pray that what we've just sung will be true for us as individuals, that we will be willing for you to take us farther than we would go ourselves. Stretch us outside of our comfort zones, the places where we want to stay, the places where we want to hide. That we will learn to walk according to your paths and your ways. And I pray that that will be true for us as a congregation too, all of us collectively. That you will stretch us, that you will lead us, that you will take us farther, take us beyond where we would go ourselves, where we would be able to go ourselves, and where we would even be willing to go ourselves. Because your ways are always higher and better (laughs) than our own. Father, thank you that you hear us. Thank you that you know our needs before we ask. But God, we want to come and we want to ask. So we continue to pray for Pastor Sam as he's recovering. Lord, we pray for many others who are dealing with with medical concerns, Leon Fraley and Lincoln Miller, Mike Malloy, Michelle Conover, Joy Evans, Arnie Arnold. We pray for Sharon Bailey, the upcoming surgery that she's going to be facing. Lord, we pray for Mary Mendazos, for her heart, for the cancer that's in her body. Work your healing in her. Lord, for Gus and the back issues he's been facing. For Joel and Kay Shannon, Jenny Morrow. Lord, we lift up uh, options as we're going to be collecting for them. Thank you for the work that they do with with young girls and families. I pray that you will use them to be a blessing, um, to provide different options uh, for, uh, for these families, for these girls, and to provide the resources they need. Lord, we give you joy. We, we, we come with joy. We're, we're thankful for Joyce and Aziz and their baby girl. Um, bless their family. Strengthen their family. We pray for Pastor Scott and his family as they're making the transition from Trinity to here. Thank you for bringing him to us and for all the good that you have planned, all that you want to do. And Lord, for Pastor Sam and Lisa as they're also transitioning, guide them in all of this. Provide the staff that we need and and guide our SPR team as they're working with all of this. We lift up our president, Joe Biden, and Vice President Harris, all of our governors, senators, give them wisdom and direction. And Lord, we pray for Pat now as she comes and, and brings the message. Thank you for the words that you've put in her heart and her mind. Speak through her. Open our hearts to hear them and all that you have to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. So right here I say, Happy Mother's Day, but you've heard it already how many times, so you're probably tired of it. (laughs) But I'm going to start with a story this morning about a very brave, brave lady. She was older, I'm going to say. I don't know how old, but she was pretty old. Sound asleep in her bed, and all of a sudden she hears this ruckus downstairs in her house. And she thinks somebody is breaking in. So she goes gingerly down the steps. And she can see a shadow. Somebody has, in fact, broken into her home. And she yells, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Acts 2, 38. And the burglar goes And he stops dead in his tracks, and he doesn't move. Finally, the police get there, and and the police say to him, why are you still standing like that? What are you so afraid of? He said, that old lady's crazy. She has an ax and two 38s. (laughs) Ah, I thought I would get one of those. (laughs) So it's Mother's Day, and you figure I'm going to probably have to talk about a mother or some famous woman in the Bible. 
Well, it could be Mary, the mother of Jesus, or Eve, Esther, Ruth, Deborah, Mary Magdalene, uh, all, all, all great people. But I'm not talking about them today. I am going to be in the book of Ruth, but the star for today is Naomi. And I'll be reading all through the scriptures. So here we go. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live in another country for a while, the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife was Naomi. The name of his two sons were Malon and Kelon. I want to mention Naomi means pleasant, pleasant, happy, pleasant. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with two sons. And they married Moabite women, one named Orpha and the other Ruth. And they lived there about 10 years. And what do you know, Malion and Kilion, the sons, also died. And Naomi was left without her two sons and without her husband. When she heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food, Naomi and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home. With the two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Now, I can't say I got all the correct information, but the information I got was it could have been 55 to 85 miles away where they went from Bethlehem, excuse me, to some place in Moab. Now, they're walking. There's no stagecoach, no bus, no caravan, no Uber, and they're carrying everything. Two women, three, carrying everything that they have accumulated for 10 years. That, that is not pretty, and it's dirty, and it's dusty, and it's hot. So let's see what else they have to say. Now, Naomi says she gets to her daughters-in-law and says, go back, go back, each of you, go back to your mother's home, and may the Lord show kindness to you as you have shown to your dead and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you find rest in the home of another husband. She kissed them, they wept aloud, and said to her, we will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. And even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and gave birth, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord has gone out against me. As they wept again, Orpha kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Ruth, your, said Naomi, I'm sorry, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods go back with her. Now, up to now, I haven't heard Naomi being all that spiritual. I haven't heard her talking about God or following God or trusting God or any of that. Only thing I've really heard is that, you know, God's treating her really rough. Dead husband, dead sons. So it's uh, not that good looking. And now a very important piece, famous. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay, and your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me ever so severely if anything but death separates us. Well, something must be going on because Ruth says, your God will be my God. So I guess she talked about God occasionally. So, I'm not sure. So the two of them keep on, and they're heading back to Bethlehem. Long trip, very far, dirty, dusty, heavy, many miles. And they get to the edge of town, Bethlehem. Bethlehem is a teeny tiny town. 
and everybody knows everybody, and that could be a problem. That's the beginning of gossip. So, scriptures say, when they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them, and the women exclaimed, can that be Naomi? Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara, because the Almighty has made me very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. So she's not all happy and yippee over her circumstances. Now, when I started preparing this message, I thought I could stop right here because she went away full. She's coming back empty. She was pleasant. Now she's bitter. And you know what? That's life. That's real life. Real living. Regular people, difficult challenges, broken people. I could have just stopped the message right here and said, Naomi, suck it up and move on. You know, what, what's the big deal? Everybody's got problems. My mom used to say, and, and everybody has some kind of problems, I guess. And my mom used to say, if everybody gathered up all their problems and went to the middle of the street and threw them down and you looked at everybody else's problems, you'd gather up your own problems and take them back into the house because you always think somebody else has a worse, you think your situation is worse than anyone else's. And we miss that. So as I studied a little farther, I decided not to stop there. And we can be so discouraged that we miss what, what God has for us. He's going to use the circumstances, but we can miss it. About, I guess about five years ago now, my closest friend uh, was, was dying from leukemia. And don't know if she always heard me, but her sister and, and I became her caregivers, staying at the hospital, doing all kinds of stuff, taking care. And a song, I think it came out at that time, I don't know, but it, oh, it really, really meant a lot to me. It's by Laura Story, and it's called Blessings. I'm just going to read one portion. We pray for blessing. We pray for peace. We pray for comfort, protection while we sleep. We pray for healing and prosperity and to ease our suffering. You hear each spoken word. Your love is way too much to give us lesser things. And then this is the part I would sometimes whisper in her ear. Whether she was listening or could hear me or not, this is what it is. And it, there were lots of tears during that time, but I just, this was moving for me. Because what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? What if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? So if they're mercies in disguise, we don't see them, we don't always like them. But here's the real message. Naomi was a great mother-in-law. She was always looking out for the girls. You know, why don't you go back? Why don't you find somebody to make you happy? I can't do anything for you. So she was always looking out. She could have been a nasty mother-in-law, as bitter as she was. But so she, she, they get to Bethlehem, they settle in a little bit, and it turns out she has a relative that's in very good standing. He's, he's got some wealth. He's very kind. He's got a lot of fields. And so she sends, Naomi sends Ruth out there to glean the leftovers from his fields. And then Naomi gives her some great, great advice. She's still looking out for her. And here it is in Ruth 3. One day, Naomi and her mother-in-law her mother said to her, My daughter, should I not try to find a home for you where you will be provided for? Is not Boaz with those servant girls? You have been kinsmen. Oh, he's a kinsman of ours. Tonight, he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash and perfume yourself. 
Put on your best clothes. Go down to the threshing floor. But don't let him know you're there until he has finished eating and drinking. And when he lies down, note the place where he is lying. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. Well, uncover, going down to the threshing floor and doing something like that and uncovering their feet, turns out that was some kind of a signal that I might be interested in marriage. So Naomi says to her, get all gussied up. Put on your best clothes, take a bath, smell good, here's some perfume, and go down and do what I'm telling you. So when Ruth came to her mother-in-law, Naomi, the next morning, Naomi says, how did it go? So that's girl talk. Give me all the details. So she told her everything that Boaz had done for her. And she added, he gave me these six measures of barley, and he said, don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Then Naomi said, wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens today, for the man will not rest until this matter is settled. So now they're you know, sharing a cup of tea and getting all the details. So Boaz handles all the legal stuff, the property, the money, all that business, and in Ruth 4.13, it says, and Boaz marries Ruth. And a little while later, it says, and Ruth has a baby. Then Naomi took the child, laid him in her lap, and cared for him. The women living there said, look, Naomi has a son. And they named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. This, then, is the family line of Perez. Boaz was the father of Obed, Obed the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of David. Now, I'm no genealogy kind of expert, but that makes Naomi and Ruth like grandmother and great-grandmother to David. And Jesus comes through the line of David. So though she went out, and came back empty, now she's, she's full. She's got some good stuff going in her life. So I'm going to wrap it up. Number one, God continues to move in hardships, and we can't always see, but he's got it. Two, we can help others, even in our most difficult times, and Naomi did. She could have been a nightmare mother-in-law, but she was always looking out for, for Ruth. Number three, even when we can't see and think, nothing good can come out of our circumstances and we reach a dead end, God is working it out. He knows the beginning, he knows the end, and he knows everything in between, which makes me think of another song. God is too kind. God is too wise to be mistaken. God is too good to be unkind. So when you can't see his plan, when you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. He alone is faithful and true, and he alone knows what is best for you. Let's pray. God, I thank you that I do not have to know the beginning or the end or the middle, that you know everything. I thank you that you love us, you care for us. You want the best for us. I thank you for the example of Ruth and Naomi and for the bloodline. And I thank you that you hear us when we pray. We don't always get the answers we want in the particular way that we want, but you always have our back. Thank you, Lord. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Pat. What if trials of this life are God's mercies in disguise? We're about to join together in communion, and we get to do that as a family, as a church family. So I encourage you, if you're experiencing trials in whatever way they might be, Bring them to God as you take the bread and take the cup. 
Bring them to God. We're here together as a family taking communion. You're not alone. You have a family, a church family, and you have God. Let's prepare for communion together. We're going to sing, let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O Lord, have mercy on me. Let us drink the cup together on our knees. Let us drink the cup together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O Lord, have mercy on me. Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O Lord, have mercy. I'm going to take this off so you can hear me this morning, amen? Boy, the presence of God is with us this morning. I just love that, the word of Pat brought. And I just thought about that this morning, fresh and anew. And I knew it, but it hit me this morning. It's the bloodline. And this morning, we're, we're going to take communion, and we're under his bloodline for what he did on the cross. You know, one of the very last acts that Jesus did before he went to the cross is to make sure that we're under his bloodline, amen? Because it gave his very heart, his body, his life for you and me. And I know I, I was thinking over the last couple of weeks, I know many have been tired through the, the COVID and all the things that have been going on. And, and sometimes people say, I just wish life would be back to normal, whatever that is. And I've been praying, I don't want it to get back to normal. I just want whatever God wants for you and me. How many want that? I don't want normal. I just want what God wants, don't you? I don't know what that looks like, but I'll tell you what I experienced last week as we go to communion this morning, because I think it really applies, because it was with my heart. I was laying on a table, and there was a guy putting a, a wire through my heart. It was interesting. You know what the funny part was? When he said, uh-oh. When someone has a wire in your heart and he says, uh-oh, and you're half awake, You say, uh oh, too. And I look up and I pray. Lord, it's yours. Lord, my heart's yours. Say, I want my heart to be 
yours because I want to do whatever you want. I, I want to love my wife and my kids and my grandkids. See, you know what he was doing? He was cleaning out my heart, my physical heart. But see, when we come and take communion, you know what we're doing? We're allowing God to come and what? We're confessing to him and we're saying, Lord, clean up my spiritual heart. And allow your blood to come and cleanse and say, Lord, you know what? See, I had some gunk in my heart. That's the uh ohs. And they put something called stents so that all of a sudden he showed me, he goes, once I put the stents in, your heart began to pump like it has in years. And things begin to flow. Like we love to sing that old hymn, Oh, precious is the flow that makes it what? Why is no, no other fountain we know? What? Nothing but the. Yeah. And something happened in my heart that day that my heart, all of a sudden, I saw it on 3D. My heart started going boom, boom. He goes, Guess what? You're going to do fine. You got to exercise, you got to eat right, and you got to stay away from stress. Life is stress, right? It's how we do it. My point is this, family. What is in our hearts today as we come to his table? See, Jesus invited us at his table. All who love him and are saying, look, there's a lot of stuff in my life I need to repent of. Lord, you know we need to be in one with you. We need to be one with one another, don't we? There's a lot of junk. There's a lot of things that clogs us up. So I'm going to ask you right now just to bow your heads with me, would you? And say, Lord, there are times we haven't loved you or one another like we ought. There's some times, Lord, we've goofed it up. We've broken the things we know against you and others that we should rebel against you and, and uh, our love for others and our neighbors. Lord, we need you more than ever. So we want to take a moment, Lord, because that's what Paul says. Make your hearts right before we come to this table. Because, Lord, you invited us to this table this morning. Lord, I love you so much. I guess I'm emotional, Lord, because I know my days are numbered here. And I love this family. I love this community. I want to see you continue to do your work here. And Lord, I just pray right now, Lord, that you would just guide us. Bless these elements we're about to take, the bread and the cup. Both those who are here in this in this place, Lord, and both who are listening, Lord, wherever they may be, would this place, this moment be a holy one as we surrender ourselves to you, O oh Jesus. May we hear the good news that while we were sinners, Lord, you loved us and you've forgiven us. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. So on that night, he took the bread. And we're going to take the elements in just a second. But let me read the scripture, and then we'll take the elements, if you would. On the night, he took the bread, and he broke it, didn't he? And he said, this is my body, which is what? Give it for you. And so he broke it. And in that same night, he, he took the cup, and he blessed it. And he said, this is the cup. This is my blood, which is given for you of the new covenant. He said, drink ye all of it in remembrance of me. And so I'm going to ask you today to take the bread at this time. And to, if you have those little containers here at home or here at church, take it and take the top off. And take your wafer. And would you join me this morning? And let's take the bread together. Remember, he said, this is my body which is given for you. Take and eat it. Remember his body which is given for you and that he loves you this morning. Take and eat it at this time. And at the same time, he took the cup, he blessed it and said, remember, the blood of Christ is given for you for remission of sins. How much he loves you. It's, you're under his bloodline take and drink it 
to remember no matter what we have in our lives, He loves you this morning. Take and drink ye all of it. And now we have the confidence of the children of God as we receive it. And now let's pray the prayer He taught us to pray when we say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it's in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we trespass against them. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> oh, precious is the blood that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood Stand with me this morning. Let's sing that little chorus one more time. No. Is the blood that makes me white as snow. No other bounds I know. Nothing but the blood. As we go to prayer as our benediction this morning, I just want to tell you as a pastor, what a joy it is to be with you this morning. We love you. And I'm so grateful for the staff we have. Aren't you grateful for our staff? Amen. I thank you last week. You know, I appreciated Will's message, didn't you? And, and this morning, Pat, and I appreciate Sean. I'm so blessed. Blessed for you. And we do want to be in prayer these days. We're in days of transition, but we're also in good days, too. So let's keep faithful. Let's keep praying. And let's allow God to use us. You know, I was thinking this morning as I was praying for this, that not only do we take communion, but it's the work of the cross, isn't it? It's the work of his, his work in us that we continue to pray as we leave here this morning that, Lord, not only will you do your work in us, but you would do your work what? Through us. And that you would do your work for us so that what? We're a blessing to others this week. So let's remember as we took communion this morning, it's not just for us. But it's for his will and what? For his glory. Amen? So let's pray. Father, what, a, what an awesome opportunity we have this morning to just be family for you and with you because you're the father of all. Jesus, thank you. And maybe we reminded of the work you've done on the cross for us. And we're part of the bloodline of you. What an awesome thing we, 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 we witnessed this morning as Pat just broke it down. May we go here reminded of your word that it's a living word. And may you continue that work in us through us, with us, for your honor, for your glory, and for your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, with your love and joy, and all God's people said, amen. God bless you and have a great week in him.